in Mexico. Everyone plays in the dark. If only for a cheap trip. In this country, even the most innocent cast their fortunes to invest in the shadows. The Christian, the pagan, the animists, foreigners, locals, old and young. We all play our parts in the mapping of the underbelly of Mexico. Illegal business controls Mexico. Mexicanos, Mexicanos, muera la corrupción! The old Mexico is passing. New opportunities, new directions. I am not corrupt like and you. And a new spirit has filled this country near shoring an educated workforce, a strong peso, el peso mexicano ha alcanzado récords frente al dólar. While uplifting the country as a whole, they are not immediately benefiting each Mexican. Party people. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel, my people. My name is April. My name is Rondell. And we are the Arbros. And we are so hungry, y'all. We gotta put some groceries in our house, so. Yeah, it's empty. You guys are gonna hang out with us today as we do some grocery shopping and grab a bite to eat. But a few videos ago, we talked about the Super Peso. Y'all really got at us in the comments. So today, we're talking about the, the dark, dark side of the, the Super, Super Peso, because there is a dark side. Uh, we're gonna get it. Y'all let us know. We're gonna get into it. We're gonna dissect it, talk about some of the winners and the losers. And just have a good day, so come on and hang out with us, chill, and let's get into it. Y'all, we in the country. Did y'all tell y'all we in the country? We in the country. Every uh, dollar sign we put on the screen today is a reflection of our contribution to the shadow market, the underground, here in Mexico. Y'all, these prices here are insane. A few weeks ago, we did a video about the Super Peso and y'all got at us in the comments and in no uncertain terms told us that we were wrong. Inflation in Mexico was amongst the lowest worldwide coming out of COVID. But for the average Mexican citizen, the inflation was still spiking. Meanwhile, directly across the street from this chain grocery store, there's a market where the fruits are fresher, the vegetables are greener, and all of the prices are half the price of this grocery store. So how much much did you just spend for our vegetable haul? I spent 90 pesos, which is just under $5. It's just about So we just need to do some shopping today. We'll sit down and powwow with you guys after we can find a nice, well-lit, quiet area and get into this because it's pretty interesting. grocery shopping like do you really go grocery shopping if you don't go buy you some food on the way home I know well we stopping for some tacos on the way home because we stay in the country yeah. and there are very few restaurants where we stay so yeah, not like really not too many at all nah so anyway I want to thank you guys for getting at us in the comments on that last video about super peso um, it's yeah, serious yeah let us know uh, about what's happening one being inflation one being that the super peso is not affecting everyone like that so what we found through the comments and doing our own research is that people are really hurting because what we did not take into account was hyperinflation. Yeah. So inflation coupled with that super peso was killing the finances of a lot of expats living here, a lot of migrants who are living here, and a lot of people who are just on vacation here. 
Uh, but one factor that we did not talk about in our previous video is how inflation is killing the pockets of everyday Mexican citizens. So the shadow market in Mexico is like a huge ordeal. 55% of the entire economy is shadow market. I'm not saying these guys are, but more than likely, if you see a little uh, taco stand or something like that, it's the shadow market. That's how the class of people can survive and thrive, actually. They found systems and ways to get money without giving up those taxes and paying all those additional registration fees and all that kind of good stuff. And that's what we call the shadow market. The shadow economy, AKA the informal economy, AKA the underground, refers to economic activities that operate outside of formal regulatory framework and are not reported to the government for taxation or any other purposes. Mexico, like many other countries, has a significant shadow economy to the tune of 55% of its economy. This sector encompasses various activities and can be characterized by its informal nature, lack of government oversight, and cash-based transactions. So for the past three years here in Mexico, things have just been going up, 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 and up. Um, a whole basket of, of produce, of goods, have gone up like 200%. But eggs. And that's, that's the thing. The basic items that people buy every yeah. day is the category work that had the highest inflation. Yeah. So eggs, jalapenos, uh, uh, apples, all these things have gone up tremendously. But thank God, thank God, that there is something called the shadow economy here, where they cut out all the middlemen and they sell directly to the consumer without all the regulations and all that kind of stuff, but for really deeply discounted prices. Without this economy, the poor, the very poor of Mexico could not exist. That's why 55% of the economy is the shadow economy. And that's the stuff you don't see in the hard numbers that, that these uh, economists like to tout about. I need it in my life. We've been missing these tacos, y'all. See, like it's good. Thank you. Another huge loser are the people that receive money from the United States here in Mexico. One point that uh, we find interesting about Mexico's economy is that they depend a lot on remittances. And if you don't know what that is, that's the money that flows into Mexico from the US. And it is a bigger industry than I even know of. Every month they send five to six billion dollars. But the super peso affects that greatly because the dollar is not buying as many pesos as before. People in the US that are sending money to their family members here have to send more money because what they used to send isn't meeting the right, Look, the US has hyperinflation going on as well. So now they send money to Mexico for their families that are here and that money that they're sending is not doing enough. So they're sending more money. So they're getting taxed like two ways. So, you know, it's hard times either way you want to look at it. But again, that super peso does have an upside for the economy and the country of Mexico. They're doing some things, but we just wanted to take some time to mention, you know, the people who are out here struggling to make those two ends meet together. Shocked me about the remittances. Did you know remittances make up for $60 billion a year? Just the money coming from the U.S. into Mexico. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's a um, crazy. Crazy. Woo! Well, that was an adventure. That was an adventure indeed. All right, baby, where were we? Um, so there are some obvious winners out of this group. Obviously, Mexico as a whole is winning. Hashtag winning. Winning. Everyone who's winning in Mexico has the ability to trade in USD, do business in mm -hmm. USD, mm -hmm. or travel to the US to get goods. So we're talking about middle class citizens, upper class citizens, uh, all winning in a major kind of way right now. Uh, and it's, it's kind of really 
echoes the whole sentiment of Latin America, you know what I'm saying? Like the upper class does really well, meanwhile the people at the bottom scramble. Mm -hmm. But I gotta say the president has had some awesome leadership and he's doing his best to pull people out of poverty, creating jobs. Yeah. Unemployment is at an all time low right yeah. now. Manufacturing, that nearshore uh, manufacturing. Nearshoring, all the companies that are coming to Mexico <laughs> to work. Um, all the companies that are coming here to Mexico. The United States and China are going to war over buying property here in Mexico mm -hmm. just so they can set up factories. That's hilarious. Mm -hmm. Lots of different winners at the top. And again, the country as a whole is doing really well on the international stage. I'm really excited to see where Mexico goes, especially with their interest in that group mm -hmm. of world economies. Mexico is setting the table to become once they start handling all that little in-house business and take care of the little man, honestly, they're on their way to becoming a world superpower. Mm -hmm. If you guys haven't already turned on your notifications for the eyebrows, hit that notification bell. We really need you guys to represent. Those first couple of hours are vitally important and we need your support. So hit that notification bell, check out our videos when they drop, and we got some more hot stuff coming your way. Uh, for now though, live long and prosper. Mexico, you up and coming. We looking for you, baby. <laughs> yeah. Peace and love, y'all.